I'm now absolutely delighted to introduce Professor of Epidemiology at the University of College London, Professor Sir Michael Marmot. It's going to say, don't clap yet. You don't know what I'm going to say. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. And the idea that Leeds could be a Marmot city, people's usual default position in thinking about health inequalities, you must be talking about inequalities in access to health care. No, we're not. Inequalities in access to care are extremely important, but we're concerned with the social determinants of health. We had the 2010 Marmot Review, commissioned by the government of the day, the, our 2020 review was not commissioned by the government of the day. I don't think they wanted to know, uh, supported by the Health Foundation. We had six domains of recommendations in the 2010 review, which we reinforced in our 2020 review. Give every child the best start in life, education and lifelong learning, part of what you're doing in Leeds, those first two. And number three, employment and working conditions. Number four, everybody should have at least the minimum income necessary for a healthy life. Number five, healthy and sustainable places in which to live and work, which includes housing, of course, and environment. And number six, taking a social determinants approach to prevention. In the light of COVID, and it should have been there all along, we've added number seven, tackle racism, discrimination, and their consequences. And number eight was really there from the beginning, which is deal with the climate agenda and the inequalities agenda together. We coined the phrase in the 2010 report, proportionate universalism. The default position we've just heard about Leeds of a quarter of the population living in the most deprived 10% of areas, quarter or more. And it's tempting to focus on the worst off. Kind of makes sense. We looked at Nordic countries where their whole philosophy is universalist programs. A health system for the poor is a poor health system. An education system for the poor is a poor education system. So we were trying to combine these two approaches. Given that health follows the social gradient, the more deprived the area, the worse the health. Of levelling up. Good idea. So there's the gradient. Let's say less deprivation, more affluence, shorter life expectancy. We want everybody to improve. If we focus only on the worst off, then we miss the health disadvantage. If we focus, say, on the bottom 10%, we miss the health disadvantage of being in the bottom third, but not in the bottom 10%. So we said universalist programs with effort proportionate to need. We used to think that work was the way out of poverty. It was the way out of poverty. Not anymore. 60% of adults below the poverty line are in households where at least one adult is working. Work is not the way out of poverty. The greater the number of times children were in poverty between birth and age 14, the more likely they were to have a low word score on a vocabulary test at age 14. Poverty damages children's ability to speak, let alone do well in education and get a good job. The more they were in poverty, the greater the obesity. The more they're in poverty, the greater the likelihood of depression. The decline in social renting, the rise in private renting, and particularly for younger people, the decline in home ownership, 
uh, which is a national phenomenon. The ambition to be a property owning capitalist society is under real threat. If you're in the top 10% of income in France, you spend about 6% of your income on home energy. If you're in the top 10% of income in the UK, you spend about 6% of your household income on energy. If you're in the bottom 10% of income in France, you spend 10% of your income on energy. If you're in the bottom 10% in the UK, you spend 18%. That gap between the rich and the poor in the percent of income spent on energy is bigger than in any other European country. To repeat what I said earlier, Britain is not a good place to be poor. We are a poor country with some rich people. And when the price of energy goes up, these people really suffer. Really suffer. There's no flexibility in the system. And the two big inflationary pressures have been food and energy, which selectively affect people at low income. That's all the bad news. <laughs> and there's a lot of it. But the good news is the way I began, why I'm excited. We, more than 40 local authorities, uh, one way or another, have been trying to implement Marmot principles and recommendations. Analyzing, reporting, and implementing. And the implementing is a big part of it because we don't just want to describe the problem or analyze it. We want action, and we want to see if action's making any difference. And we're hoping that Leeds will take this on, that will include business as being part of a Marmot city. In public health, we've always seen business as the enemy. Tobacco, fast foods, poor working conditions and the like. And for good reason. But given that most people in employment, a majority, are in the private sector, how about trying to make the private sector our allies rather than our enemies? And the argument from the businesses we've spoken to is, yes, of course, a healthier and more productive workforce. Staff retention, better recruitment, attracting consumers, attracting investors. And Leeds NHS could be doing this, in fact is doing it. Um, improving access to employment and targeting etc. apprenticeships, having um, being a city, uh, a civic partner, having an impact on the environment and delivering good services for the people who use that service, for the population that is being served. So the same approach that we develop for business can be used in the public sector as well. My friend Tammy gave me a book with this on the cover that's very much influenced me. Raymond Williams said, to be truly radical is to make hope possible rather than despair convincing. I think what we're doing here in Leeds is making hope possible in the face of all the pressures of despair. Thank you.